Hey everyone, Mike Burke here with InsideRealEstatePhotography.com and in this video I'm going to show you how to create a cool mask transition inside Premiere Pro that I find helps up the production value of my real estate videos and helps me set my videos apart from the pack. As I stated in the intro, this is a cool transition effect that you can create inside Premiere Pro or other video editing programs. The principles are pretty much the same thing, but it can really up the production value of your video and set your real estate videos apart from your competition. It's not that difficult to create, but it can really have an impact on the coolness factor of your videos. All right, so without further ado, let's jump into it. All right guys, so here we are in Premiere Pro. I have my two clips here that I'm gonna use to create my transition effect with. I have this first clip that sweeps past a pillar or a pole or a support pole or whatever you want to call it and we're going to use that to mask off and then transition into this closer up shot of the fireplace so two shots of the same subject but using this effect to go from a wider shot to a closer up shot in a cool slick way all right so as you see in this first clip we have this pillar that passes in front of the camera so we're going to use this pillar as a, an opportunity to ma make a mask on this side along the line here of the pillar and what that will do is cut this area out as it reveals and it will reveal this other clip underneath that's a closer up clip. So this will create that cool transition effect and as I was stating earlier, I don't do this on every video because the situation really needs to present itself. You really need to be thinking about this as you're shooting. You need an object like this pillar that will pass in front of the camera in order to create this effect and you need to think about the two shots you're gonna put together, you know, the direction you're moving and everything so they match up later. So this is all something you need to plan out while you're shooting. All right, so the first thing I need to do here is I need to get the second clip underneath the first clip where I'm gonna start masking. So as soon as this starts to reveal on, the, on this side of the frame here with this edge, that's where the mask will begin and it will continue all the way across until the new clip is completely revealed here. So I just wanna get this to the point where it's just starting to reveal as you see in the corner there. So I'm gonna back this up a little bit. So right there, it's still filling the frame and my mask is gonna start coming in on the next frame or so. So that's where I want this clip to go underneath. So I'm gonna line this clip up with the playhead there. So now with the top clip highlighted, if you go to the effects control panel here, you'll see at the opacity section here, this square here, which is create a four point polygon mask. So we wanna click on that to create a mask. Also, as you probably noticed with this text here on my clips that these are proxy files I'm editing. That's because I shot these with the A7S III. They're 4K, 120 frames per second files, 10-bit, so they're just huge files and my computer just cannot handle them, so I have to create proxies to be able to edit them. Creating proxies is probably a cool topic for another video and I will create that soon, so look out for that. All right, so I'm just gonna shrink my window down here and I'm gonna drag this mask out to the side and you can resize the mask by highlighting the corners and dragging. So I'm just gonna drag this mask to be as big as, as our frame here, basically. And now, what we wanna do is create a keyframe on mask path over here. So I'm gonna hit the stopwatch here. Starting on this frame where this clip comes in, I wanna hit the stopwatch there, because that's where our animation's gonna begin. Because we have to animate this over time to line up with the pillar edge as it goes by and uh, reveal this clip underneath. So also what I wanna do is I wanna invert this mask. So I wanna hit this box that says inverted. So that way we're still seeing the top mask and we're gonna reveal the bottom clip. So we want it to be the opposite of, of the standard way here. So now what I wanna do here is just come down here and make sure this window is highlighted and I'm gonna start hitting the right arrow a few frames here ahead just to see where this starts to come in here. And now we wanna mask this out. We need to animate our mask so it lines up with this edge the whole way. Now I just wanna make sure my mask is highlighted here so we can see where it is here. And then we're just gonna start moving these uh, corners appropriately to align with this edge here. So firstly, I'm gonna take this down here a little bit. And I'm gonna take this over. So it lines up with the edge of this, this side here. So now you can see this clip is now getting revealed underneath. And if you go from the beginning, you can see that the mask is animating as, as the clip is going by. So we just wanna to continue to do this every few frames here. So you don't have to do this every single frame, just jump ahead four or five frames and, and make your adjustments and it should animate along appropriately. If you have to go back and nitpick and adjust, you can do that. All right, again, I'm just gonna now slide this up here, this one down here, just, just 
want to make sure this is along the edge here. And actually this edge looks a little too hard, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna up the feather of this to 50. That way it's feathering a little more and not so hard edged and it looks a little more natural. So I'm just gonna continue on here every few frames until we are all the way across and this pillar has left the frame. So now we animated all the way through the clip. So let's play it back and see what it looks like. All right, so let's hit play here and take a look. Let's see as it, as it passes by here. I right, see it's not revealing. It was a little wonky right there. You can see the clip didn't line up perfectly a little bit. So we'll have to go back and adjust that. But really the rest of the way here so far looks pretty darn good. And this happens pretty much every time where you have to just kind of fine tune it afterwards. Uh, never really is perfect on the first go. So, all right, so let's nudge through here and start seeing where the funkiness happens. That's a little bit off. You can just go in and fine tune these a little bit as necessary. It's better to have it more overlapping than less, obviously you see, otherwise you get that fringe uh, along the edge, which we saw just didn't look good. By the way guys, if you're enjoying this video or other content I'm putting out on my channel, please consider subscribing. The vast majority of people that watch my videos are not subscribed to the channel. I'm not using my channel or my videos as bait to get you to buy a course or buy a book or anything of that nature. All my content is free and I'm working hard to make this the most comprehensive resource for real estate photography on the internet, free for everyone. The only thing I ask is for you to please like and subscribe as it could really help make my channel grow and make it a viable resource for everyone. Thank you. All right, so now let's play this back again and see if we were able to smooth everything out with our adjustments. All right, that's looking good. All right, yeah, that's looking nice and clean now. I didn't see any real problems with that or any weird abnormalities. All right, so one thing you probably noticed is that this is moving really slow, so we wanna speed this up and make it more lively looking. So how we're gonna do that is I'm gonna go back here to my sequence and I'm just gonna highlight both clips and I'm gonna control click on them. And I'm gonna nest or right click, you can do nest and make a next nested sequence. Uh, I'm just gonna leave it named nested sequence three, hit okay. So now we have these clips built into one sequence here. So now with a nested sequence, we can treat it as if it's one video clip and add time remapping and speed ramps and all that kind of stuff, which we wouldn't be able to do on two separate clips. All right, so what I wanna do here is have it start normal speed and then speed up as it goes through the transition and slow back down towards the end. So how we do that is with the speed ramp. So I just wanna find the point where I want it to start speeding up, like somewhere around here. So I'm just gonna control click on this nested sequence. I'm gonna to go to show clip keyframes and I'm gonna to go to time remapping speed. So now we have this line here, which is our speed control here. And we can add points and ramp this up and down wherever we want. So with uh, where my playhead is, where I want it to start speeding up, I'm gonna add a point here. So I'm gonna just hit the command key, which will give you this little plus arrow icon and click on it. And there we go, now we have a point here. And now I wanna to go to the point where I want it to start slowing down again, which is somewhere around here. So again, I'm gonna command, get this arrow here and click and make another point here. So now we have our point where we want it to start speeding up and start slowing down, but right now it's still just normal speed. So what we wanna do here is if you go over the middle in between the two points, you'll see that little up and down arrow. So if I grab the the line here and drag it up, it'll start speeding up. You can see the percentage there underneath, how much faster you're speeding it up. And I'm gonna go to around a thousand percent. That's where I usually like to start with speed ramps. All right, so we're close to a thousand here now, but what we have going on here is that it's just going from normal speed to a thousand immediately and then from a thousand back to normal speed immediately with no gradation here going up and down. So we wanna smooth it out and have it speed up 
gradually and then slow down gradually so it's nice and smooth looking. So how we do that is if you grab on the right side of this handle here and drag to the right, you'll see this ramp up here. So now we have the speed ramping going up and then again on this side, we wanna grab the, the, the left side and drag it left towards that. And we wanna make this nice even hill here up and then down. So the other thing you can do here to make it even more graceful looking is if you highlight this section, you'll get this little blue thing in the middle here. If you grab the handle and drag to the right, you'll see now it's smoothing out this curve. So it's gonna go nice and ease its way in and then ease its way out. And again, we wanna do that on this other side here, but we're gonna drag it towards the left. So now we have this nice easing curve here up and down. So let's play this now and see what this looks like. So it's going normal speed, speeding up and then slowing back down. So that looks really cool. However, I wanna speed it up a little bit more. So if you go in between these two again and just drag up more, you can speed it up even more. Let's see what that looks like. Yep. Uh, I like the speed of that. As you can see, adding the speed ramp makes it more slick looking, more eye catching and more exciting for the viewer to watch. It really makes it pop. All right, so that's really all there is to it to this transition effect inside Premiere Pro. So let's render this out and take a look at the final clip. All right, everyone, I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, again, please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't done so already. I really appreciate your support. Thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you again soon on the next one.